Digestion part two. Uh, digestion uh, is divided into the intracellular, intercellular, intracellular, and extracellular, which uh, also may be classified into the parietal parietal and uh, digestion in the lumen of the gastrointestinal tract the lumen so parietal is very important uh, it is uh, produced by enzymes which are fixed on the mucous membrane of the intestine this fixed on the enterocytes enzymes are very active and uh, produce a huge impact on the digestion itself okay so uh, in the gastrointestinal tract uh, as we already spoke about it uh, proteins are broken down into the amino acids the lipids into the glycerol and uh, the fatty acids and uh, carbohydrates uh, are broken down into the separate monosaccharides which are then should be absorbed absorbed into internal environment of the body the products of hydrolysis of proteins and uh, carbohydrates are absorbed into the bloodstream and products of absorption of lipids are absorbed into the lymph um, oh, okay uh, along with the products of hydrolysis uh, the uh, large amount of water should be absorbed as we spoke already several liters of saliva several liters of gas of gastric juice which are released per day uh, the certain amount of bile about one liter about one two liters of pancreatic juice water that we drink water in uh, food and uh, intestinal juice produce the total amount of about 10 liters per day so all this water should be absorbed because uh, the released with feces amount of water is much less is about maybe 500 milliliters so the mechanisms of absorption now we will speak about the absorption the uh, factors which make absorption easy are uh, following uh, first is the large surface of absorption this large surface of gastrointestinal tract is produced first by the uh, long um, length of uh, the intestine is uh, about seven maybe eight meters long first is the longevity of gastrointestinal tract is long long tube second factor is explained by the uh, intestinal folds if we will look at the mucous membrane it produces folds like that folds they increase the surface three if we will look at the mucous membrane we will see that the mucous membrane produces the villi the villi each villi is covered by enterocytes and uh, it contains inside the blood vessel and lymphatic vessel for absorption of nutrients brush border brush border if we will look at each separate enterocyte we will see that it is covered by microvilli microvilli brush border 
which also increases the surface of absorption. So uh, the total surface of absorption is uh, impressive. Uh, it is um, maybe like a volleyball field that produces the surface of a volleyball field. So it makes absorption easier. So how the nutrients are absorbed, nutrients and water. So the unit of uh, absorption is, the, is produced by separate neighbor enterocytes and the dense, dense contact between them. So we will see two enterocytes on the basal membrane and a cleft between them. So here we have a dense contact and symport of sodium and glucose is uh, producing the high concentration, osmotic concentration of uh, sodium and glucose in this cleft. So therefore water passively is entering this cleft, water with dissolved products of hydrolysis, amino acids monosaccharides etc and then they are absorbed into the bloodstream and and lymph fat lymph as it was already told uh, as we told already um, what is important is that there is a portal system this blood is directed into the vena porta which is uh, entering the liver and then in the liver Possibly uh, the toxic agents are detoxicated and then blood is leaving the liver through the hepatic vein into the vena cava inferior. So uh, again, the blood from intestine, uh, from the stomach is directed into the portal system to, into the liver, into the liver. Okay, then um, um, the products of hydrolysis of lipids, of fats, it is also important. The uh, lipids are resynthesized in the, en in the enterocytes, so from gl glycerol and from um, fatty acids in enterocytes the lipids are again synthesized and in such form are absorbed into the lymph okay motor activity of gastrointestinal tract it is also important thing there is peristalsis when the smooth musculature propels the chyme um, from oral cavity to rectum there is antiperistalsis the uh, reverse direction there is pendaldum peristalsis rhythmic segment, segment segmentation and uh, other types of uh, motor activity which are coordinated by uh, for example uh, parasympathetic nervous system and uh, parasympathetic nervous system increases the motor activity of gastrointestinal tract sympathetic decreases and also by hormones like motilin. Motilin is a hormone of diffuse endocrine system which increases the peristalsis of gastrointestinal tract. So along with motilin we have many other hormones. Uh, for example secretin. Secretin increases the uh, activity of pancreas and pancreas in response to secretin produces a large amount of uh, bicarbonates and small amount of enzymes. For example, um, uh, cholecystokinin, uh, pancreasimine, stimulates pancreatic secretion, which uh, increases the amount of enzymes in the pancreatic juice uh, and uh, induces small amount of bicarbonates in, in um, the composition of pancreatic juice. Okay, so uh, the nutrients are absorbed, water is absorbed, 
and um, now um, we should say a pair of words about defecation so defecation is the release of feces from uh, the rectum uh, there are two sphincters two anal sphincters one is internal sphincter and the second is external sphincter so internal sphincter is uh, made is made up of uh, smooth musculature so it's controlled by autonomic nervous system and uh, external sphincter is um, striated musculature striated muscle so is controlled by somatic nervous system somatic so during def defecation um, the, when the rectum is filled rectum is filled by feces mechanoreceptors are stimulated and uh, the reflex is reflex arch is uh, um, activated with uh, participants of the sacral part of the spinal cord and in response the parasympathetic nervous system um, relaxes internal anal sphincter but somatic nervous system, uh, somatic uh, nervous system still uh, closes the external sphincter so at right place at right time pers a person can um, consciously relax external anal sphincter and at the same time during defecation the diaphragm flattens is uh, um, contracted contracts and uh, abdominal muscles also contract musculus rectus abdominis ob obliquus musculus obliquus abdominis at the same time the intra-intestinal pressure increases somatic sphincter relaxes external sphincter relaxes and defecation occurs so this is the mechanism of defecation okay and now we will speak about the regulation of hunger the mechanisms of hunger and about satiety so first hunger hunger first so uh, for uh, hunger we have several theories first theory is called hungry blood hungry blood theory which explains the hunger um, as um, an event that occurs when nutrients level in blood decreases so it's logically and it's quite simple to understand um, so we have uh, the second theory which is also important which is called hungry or empty stomach empty stomach theory which explains uh, the mechanism of hunger by a special type of contraction of the stomach when stomach is empty so it contracts and it also induces the hunger so both theories work both factors are important what about the center of hunger and center of satiety these centers are located in the hypothalamus hypothalamus in the lateral hypothalamus the lateral part lateral we have center of hunger and in the ventromedial hypothalamus hypothalamus uh, is uh, located the center of satiety satiety center so if we will um, electrically stimulate the lateral hypothalamus then animal will seek the food will eat if even if uh, the animal is full uh, was uh, if we have feed this, this animal and um, so it proves that the lateral hypothalamus uh, contains the center of hunger and the same thing may be uh, in the same manner we may examine ventromedial hypothalamus okay what about the what about the satiety about the satiety so if uh, we will examine uh, the mechanisms of uh, the mechanisms of satiety we may notice that a person became set is saturated is full 
after 10-15 uh, minutes after the beginning of the meal normally 15 maybe 20 minutes so this phase of satiety so satiety satiety This first phase of satiety is called sensory phase. Sensory phase. At that time, the nutrients, predominantly, cannot be absorbed into the internal environment of the body. Because in the stomach, the time um, will uh, be maybe for uh, maybe for five uh, four five hours so it's pretty much so uh, this is the sensory phase and the second phase is called um, the metabolic satiety metabolic satiety uh, this phase uh, happens after maybe five six hours after the beginning of the meal so at that time the nutrients are really absorbed into the internal environment of the body so what about the sensory phase uh, but what is important at that phase so 20 minutes after the beginning of a meal the nutrients level in blood increases but it happens due to the release of nutrients from the depot the first uh, line uh, the first the quickest depot is produced by the liver and skeletal muscles and uh, glycogen which is uh, which which, which uh, is um, um, stored in uh, liver and the striated muscles so uh, the hormones are released after the beginning of the meal which release carbohydrates from the depot so and the sensory phase uh, happens very quickly and only after a few hours during metabolic phase the nutrients are absorbed into the bloodstream and sometimes we are again hungry in that at that period of time so we have two phases of uh, satiety to periods sensory phase and metabolic phase of satiety so the satiety and hunger are also maybe regulated by the special hormones for example uh, leptin leptin is produced by lipid tissue by fats uh, containing cells leptin and leptin decreases the hunger hunger decreases the hunger and also it increases sympathetic nervous system tone uh, making the organism more active and also it may um, increase the process uh, of uh, thermogenesis and uh, another hormone is called ghrelin so ghrelin it um, is produced by gastrointestinal tract by stomach and intestine and it increases the hunger so it is produced when stomach and intestine became empty so ghrelin and leptin are the examples of hormones that also modulate the hunger and satiety so and uh, the last thing is that we should uh, draw the functional system which uh, controls the optimal level of nutrients in the blood so we'll draw this functional system so optimal for metabolism metabolism nutrients level nutrients level in the blood so nutrients level in the blood may increase and decrease in large margins so it is plastic parameter of the internal environment we have as usual chemoreceptors chemo receptors chemoreceptors in the blood vessels and we have feedback so afferentation to the nervous system in the cns we have hypothalamus 
with lateral and ventromedial hypothalamus, uh, which controls the hunger and satiety. So lateral hypothalamus and ventro, ventro medial hypothalamus. We have also cortex, conscious control of hunger and satiety and, and other structures which are involved in this process. So we have several uh, mechanisms, including the humoral regulation. We have internal and external link. So internal link, we have the possibility to influence the nutrients level by the intensity of metabolism. Metabolism. Intensity of metabolism may increase or decrease. So if a person uh, during starvation, the metabolism uh, intensity decreases, of course. We have the depot, depot of nutrients, and uh, this depot may be utilized. We told already about the liver and the striated muscles, etc. So it is also the mechanism that may control the level of nutrients in the gastrointestinal tract. Redistribution, redistribution. Redistribution of nutrients. Uh, so during starvation, the nutrients are directed into the most important organs, for example, to the brain. And uh, the lack of nutrients observed in the organs which are not vital, which fulfill not vital functions. But the most important thing in this functional system is external link. So it is uh, the behavioral link. So the person seeks, seeking food, then food is placed in the oral cavity, then stomach, intestine, and uh, from uh, this chain of organs the nutrients are absorbed and this is the so-called mechanism of the metabolic satiety this is metabolic satiety but already after the placement of food into oral cavity into the stomach we have so-called sensory satiety which uh, produces the feeling of satiety and it is the first phase uh, so um, together this um, mechanism which is included into this functional system supports the optimal nutrients level in the blood.